Okay, so anyone that's seen the video of the fire caused by the brand new Dayu, and uh, this is the old dirty one that I uh, was going to replace with the brand new one. Uh, it's exactly the same, same model number, bought about a year and a bit ago. And uh, I have just taken out the, the water still coming out of this. I have taken out the fuse from the plug and uh, of the burnt one, and we're just going to see whether that has failed or not. And no, it hasn't failed. So. Uh, that's very interesting on its own. I've had a closer look at the burnt one and it would appear that the, the bulk of the damage is down this right side and uh, you can see I suspect bits of this control board or whatever's behind here you can definitely see fiberglass that is hanging down in, in this sort of area and it's all burnt down here so I think the failure is under here somewhere so what I thought we would do is uh, just, I've tried to empty this out as much as possible. We're going to take this cover off and uh, see if we can dismantle some of this and just see what we can see. We certainly won't be using this one again, uh, you know, whether it's working uh, or correctly or not. This is, uh, so let's have a look. We have um, just standard screws in the back there, which again is a bit of a surprise. You would think that they would be tamper-proof screws, but there's no sign of that. So typical, just when I'm trying to film. So we've got some screws under here also. Again, they are not anti-tamper screws. And I suspect this will allow us to lift the top off, which might prove to be very interesting indeed. Because I'm pretty certain that's where the problem occurred. Okay. Yeah, absolutely it occurred here. So, let's have a look. I'm going to have to take this base off as well. I'm just... Yeah, it does look like this. We've got mains coming into this board. Just going to pick the camera up for a closer look. We've got various earth points by the looks of it, and wires, and uh, everything is going up through the machine and into this board. What the hell could destroy it so quickly? So I'm going to just unscrew this and we'll have a look at the other side.
Oh shit, right in the finger. Ouch. So let's have a closer look at this. It all looks pretty uninteresting, frankly. We've got a small one amp fuse there. We have a relay. There's nothing very interesting going on there. Don't think we're going to be able to read a number on that. This is when the old microscope would have come in very handy. Nothing untoward there, is there? That I can see. What that is between those tracks. What the hell is that? Let's have a look at that in a minute. Yeah, so uh, no idea really. Just pretty standard circuits. Again, don't know whether we're going to be able to read numbers off of that. I'm going to have to take my glasses off and have a closer look. Hmm. Very interesting. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to have a, do a bit more dismantling, I think, and then we'll have a another look. See if we can just zoom in here. So it turns out that that is a lump of solder bridging across the uh, the tracks there. Hopefully you can. Oh, if it will just stay focused. Yeah, hopefully you can see that. I've just given it a poke with a pointy screwdriver, and that is not just falling off. Like it's just accidentally landed there. It is on a, um, well you can see that there, it's on that little BC type transistor. Again looks like all of the, oh no you can read it. Mm, I can see a 4317 so it's a little voltage regulator is it? Very hard to see the writing on it. But anyway, so I don't like to be don't like to see stuff like that, that's for sure. But nothing is glaringly obvious. <laughs> you can say, whoa wow, that's a dreadful uh, cook up. Give that a, another poke, see if it will actually come off. Yeah, it eventually came off with a bit of poking. Yeah, I don't know what the hell would have uh, caused this to go up. Need to see that board. Is there anything else here that could have caused it? I don't know. Yeah, just all push fit connections, a bit of uh, corrosion on there, exactly the tightest of fits but I guess it's not going anywhere and it's not really under any pressure so I assume that is absolutely fine. I can't 
I'll get this part. Looks like we've got other screws under here. Sure these little feet will come off and reveal screws. So let's get this off. Just some screws in there. So we've got some bungs here. temper you know they've fitted one possibly two mm. is that an anti temper no it isn't no, why does this one look like it is well, unless it's just a bit badly formed screening the plastic from the heat and uh, there's a little pump down here so we'll just strip this apart have a look at it Looks like some sort of reed valve, a reed switch there. I wonder if it's a uh, switch in case the machine is knocked over, it just cuts it off. Yeah, not sure. I'm have a closer look at all of this when it's in bits. So, lots of these pipes are actually held in place with very small, well, actually one of the pipes is held in place with a uh, small cable tie. It's uh, they're riveted earths. Just going to snip those off so we can get rid of the. Oh, you've got the mains coming in there. Again, not really interested in that. We will cut the plug off. And I can feed that through. I should 
be able to get rid of this part. So yeah, you can see there is a metal base there for some reason, and uh, I don't have those two earthed wires going to it. Whether you can see it on the camera or not. what is doing all the heating. These little metal clamps, hopefully you can see here, are just riveted together. And then these silicon tubes are fastened with little hose clamp which we can just pull off glass or plastic? Yeah, I'm not sure. Looks like we have, is that some sort of cut off device, thermal fuse, whatever? Let's have a look. like it is a bimetallic strip cut off of some description. Hmm, never like to see twisted together connections like this, especially if they're crap and they just pull off. These appear to be crimped on pretty well. to think of this. Whatever that is, it's definitely a 
which have summed it up. There we go, that's just on there with some, I'm going to say epoxy. I think it probably is an epoxy, it's not a hot melt situation. doing either. Yeah, so really it's anybody's guess here. The mains is coming in to the blue and the red. It's going straight through this. So that must be a heat sensitive biometallic strip. straight into here, that is into the relays. Some of these riveted connections are now a bit loose where I've moved this around. Yeah, it's a really weird setup. Quite sure how that works at all. Definitely something to do with these tubes and these connections here. Yeah, if anyone's worked on one of these before and can explain to me exactly how that is. Uh, Working, I'd like to know. Twenty-seven ohms between the two, but I don't know where that goes back to on that board. Let's have a look. Okay, so this is obviously the business end. I have now chopped off all the wires. You can see that the this was earthed, this was earthed, this was earthed, and uh, there is nothing connecting these tubes, except I still get a 26 ohm reading. Don't know whether I'm going to be able to do this with one hand. Let me turn it over. We'll stuff a probe in there and I will touch there. So that's where we've got the probes and that is the reading we've got. <laughs> so they're chucking power in one end and uh, it is somehow heating these tubes up because of the resistance. Oh, again, don't get that either. I've never seen anything like that before. I don't know what it's made of. Right, so over to the experts. What the hell is going on there? You can see that they are a slightly different colour as well, it's not clear glass. Unfortunately the uh, LED bulbs above me are reacting, I'm not showing this off very well, but there is a definite, I don't know, it's a bluey purple, almost a greeny tinge on this one, they look different depending on how you move them. But we've clearly got contacts to all of them and if you look here, the uh, there's a metal band around 
Well, actually, it's part of the tube. Well, I've never seen anything like that before. No doubt it's common and everybody else knows what it is, but uh, I have never seen anything like that before. So it must be glass, I guess, some sort of resistive glass. Definitely feels cold like glass now. Anyway, there you go. So that's how that works. And uh, certainly judging by the other burnt units, something up the top end occurred uh, to cause the problem.